Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Rock Family Live broadcast. My name is Reverend Bradford Hole, and um, this morning we're going to be talking about the subject of end times, and especially we're going to be talking about a concept called the rapture. Now, the word rapture is really not in the Bible itself. It's from the Greek word rapio, meaning, or the Latin word rapio, meaning to snatch away. But the concept in the scripture is, is, is clearly taught. So we're going to take a look at it. The time was about 1830 or so. And um, uh, this religious leader was convinced he knew when Jesus Christ was going to come back. And he preached it for a while and amassed quite a few followers, I think about 10,000 or so. When the time came when they were expecting our Lord to return, uh, quite a few of them quit their jobs, left where they lived, and were waiting for the Lord to return on a cliff. Well, when, when the Lord did not come at that time, he then said, oh, I just made some mistakes on calculations, and he went through the whole thing again. It's very dangerous. So the, so the question is, what we believe about the end times, does that affect how we live our life? And I think the answer to that is, yes, it does. So we got to be careful to make sure that when we talk about the end times, uh, the word, uh, the Bible term is, is really eschatology, the study of the end times. That we follow what the Bible says, not just our own thoughts and our own ideas. And I might add, especially in the areas of eschatology, we really should hold loosely to the specifics of it. Meaning, there could be variations in the time. Okay, people believing the Lord is coming back. And I believe that the scripture really teaches that the Lord is coming back. But it's a question of timing. So we're going to look at what did the scripture, what does the scripture actually say about that? Well, the end is near, saying the threat of nuclear apocalypse did not disappear with the end of the Cold War. The keepers of the doomsday clock moved the hands three minutes closer to midnight. The world is still a very dangerous place and the trends are in the wrong direction, says Leonard Reiser, chairman of the um, chairman of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. He resets the atomic clock at about 14 minutes before the hour and symbolizes that nuclear apocalypse. We're not trying to cry fire in the world's theater, said Reisler, a witness to the first atomic bomb blast, but we do want to sound an alarm. We do want to call for increased vigilance. Doomsday Clock was introduced in 1947, shows the world on its face. The bulletin board, um, the bulletin board um, has changed its hand 16 times to reflect world events. The closest, closest the clock ever went to nuclear midnight was 1953 when it was moved to two minutes in response to the first hydrogen bomb set off by the United States. It was last changed in 1991 when the hands moved back to 17 minutes until midnight in the wave of Cold War optimism. Increased vigilance is the counsel of Scripture also. The end is near. So what is the rapture of the church? The word rapture does not, is carrying off, it comes from the Latin word carrying off, transport or snatching away. The concept of carrying off or the, is clearly taught in Scripture. The rapture of the church is an event in which God snatches away all believers from the earth in order to make way for the, his righteous judgment to be poured out on the, on the earth during the tribulation period. The rapture is primarily uh, described primarily in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 54. God will resurrect all believers who have died, giving them glorified bodies, and then take them from earth along with living believers who will also be glorified bodies at that time. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout, the trump of God. And, and the Lord um, will come down from heaven with loud command and the voice of the archangel with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord forever. The rapture involves an instantaneous transformation of our bodies to fit us for eternity. We know that when he, Christ, appears, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's 1 John 3, 2. The rapture is to be distinguished for this from the second coming. At the rapture, the Lord comes in the clouds to meet us in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. At the second coming, the Lord descends all the way to earth and stands on the Mount of Olives, resulting in a great earthquake, followed by the defeat of God's enemies, that's Zechariah 14, 3 through 4. The doctrine of the rapture was not taught in the Old Testament, which is why Paul calls it a mystery. Now revealed, listen, I tell you, mystery, we will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, the dead it will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Praise the Lord. The rapture of the church is a glorious event that we should be longing for. We will finally be free from sin. We will be in God's presence forever. There is far too much debate over the meaning and the scope of rapture. This is not God's intent. Rather, the rapture should be comforting doctrine full of hope. God wants us to encourage one another with these words. Now, I'm going to be clear about this. I'm not quite sure the, the rapture's timing. Uh, some people affirm, you know, I affirm the second coming of Christ... And I certainly am pre-millennial. But depending on the scriptures, in one case goes to a case can be made for pre-trib, post-trib, and mid-trib, and the various adaptations of these positions. It's a very complicated issue, as there are several positions as to the time of the rapture can be defended biblically. There's a historic pre-millennialism, which the rapture is believed to be synonymous with the second coming of Christ part of the same event. But if you take the pre-tribulation rapture position, which is a little bit more modern, which I think the scripture tends to um, support, uh, dispensationalism, uh, taken by Hal Lindsey and the authors of the Left Behind series. Um, and, and in that, see, the question is, um, the two positions are, if you are a Christian, you'll be taken in the rapture regardless. The other position is, if you're a Christian, but you're not fully committed to Christ, you might be left behind. I think the, the safer position, I, and I'm just telling you for me, is to, let's, let's make sure we're really living for the Lord. Let's not play games. Let's Let's not try to live too close to the line, but let's try to live as holy and righteous as God possibly can make us. Um, regardless, we have an obligation to the Lord himself to be used of God. So I think, you know, it, it would be wise to, number one, take a position that uh, we need to be in Christ and we need to fully surrender to the Lord living for God. Um, I think that would be the responsible position to take. The other thing is, I'm, I'm going to be clear about this. I tend to believe that the scripture teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. But based on my understanding, there is a possibility, especially for those of you who are living in other countries, you're already experiencing, whereas I don't believe you're experiencing the tribulation period. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, we might be close, but we're not there yet. But you are facing persecution. And, in, and the persecution is getting worse. It's not getting better, which tends to tell me we're probably getting closer to the return of our Lord. So what does that mean to... Christians. Well, number one, I believe that all of the signs of the Lord's return have been fulfilled, except one. And, and this is going to explain it a little bit. 
This is my friend. Um, he's a Greek scholar. His name is Rick Renner. And uh, I believe this will give us kind of a hint as to what's going on here. For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. For me, there is now the, no doubt that we're living in the end church age. In fact, it's, uh, it's a fact that many earth-shattering events will occur before the coming of the Lord, and we've witnessed many of them. In recent years, the world has experienced many upheavals and disasters that have left many believers reeling and wondering if, if the coming of Christ is imminent. Fortunately, the Bible provides clear guidance on this topic. And in numerous passages through the Old and New Testament, in fact, Jesus himself prophesied about the state of the world in the last days. In Matthew 24, 7 and 8, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines um, and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Notice the phrase, beginning of sorrows, in this verse. The word sorrows is the Greek word odin, which specifically... Um, describes the labor pains of a pregnant woman experiences before she gives birth. However, Jesus called this period of time the beginning of sorrows, not the end of sorrows. The Greek word for beginning is arche, which in this particular case means the starting point. By using this word, Jesus was clearly teaching that the events described in verse 7 would be the beginning of an undefined period that would transpire before the coming of Christ. He does not give us a specific time frame, but he does reveal signs and indicators to let us know that when we have entered into this turbulent period, it's important to understand it. Just because some of these events are occurring today doesn't mean we've reached the end. It simply means the process has begun. As he, we approach the end of the church age, Jesus said the world will begin to feel stress and pressure like a woman, um, preparing to give birth to a baby. Let's think for a moment about the process of giving birth. A woman's pain starts slowly, then gradually grows stronger and stronger, and finally her whole body is pushing downward to deliver that child. At the very last moment, the pains come quickly. They are intense. As an indicator, she is right at the moment of delivery. Likewise,